Good morning, afternoon, evening, and good night, everyone. So welcome back to our second lecture. So today, um, we're gonna look at slightly different um points on, uh, proteins and peptides. So let's move on. So again, um, last week I've mentioned that uh, the lecture structure for, um, during the MCO will be slightly different than the one initially published um on Spectrum. So make sure you do take note of um, at least all the um, tutorial um, and uh, assignment tests or, or tests that um, I'm, I'm going to give out. Okay. Um, so uh, I forgot to mention um, about this. Um, well, your assignment, okay, um, will need to be submitted by week 14. All right. However, even though um, you, you can submit it until week 14, you need to remember that um, this assignment will count towards your final mark, okay? Because there's no final exam. And um, if I'm not mistaken, um, Dr. Azena will also have, um, uh, you also have an assignment video or something with Dr. Azena that you need to submit by also by week 14. So uh, please do not delay. Um, I'm gonna give out the um instruction on week seven, okay. In instruction for um assignment. Okay, um, it, it will be slightly earlier than than I planned because um I'm gonna teach you to use some of um software. So hopefully, um, I think it's it's very unfortunate because two of you. Or one of two of you do not have um a laptop to work with um but it's still okay um i guess i'll probably do a video on how you can actually do this um but uh, for the assignment itself you will need to submit it okay even though you don't have a pc or a laptop you will need to submit it because it counts um towards your final mark Alright, but anyway, um, I, I haven't received any feedback from the two of you about whether there's an issue viewing this lecture slide from Spectrum. So if you do have any, please let me know. Alright? Okay, so um, last week, or last Tuesday, we've looked at um, a little bit of information on amino acid and that there's 20 natural liquid amino acid which can be divided into 10 and 10, which is um, essential and non-essential amino acids. Okay, and we've also looked at um, the naming system for the amino acid where you have your full name, um, you have a three-letter code and a single-letter code. Okay, and we also looked at the PKA's values of um, the carboxyl terminal, the amine terminal, and also um, the side chain for some of the amino acids okay so um these are not really critical but you need to know in case in the future you you want to work with amino acids or proteins um, these are some of the information that you you will need to take into consideration and um, play around with um, their chemistries okay so um this week we will look at how to make amino acid synthetically so you know that in biology um well last tuesday i've shown you a slide of which um the non-essential amino acid can be synthesized from the essential amino acids or glucose um, but this time around um we, we're gonna look at uh, the synthetic approach of synthesizing amino acid and um the first question is, why do we need to make amino acids? Alright, so how important is amino acid in our daily life? So, there's actually um, more than four industries, but over here, these are the four main industries where amino acid is highly uh, valued or is highly used. Okay, first one is in food. Um, where you have uh, flavoring such as um, MSG, everybody knows MSG. Um, if you don't know MSG, you will definitely know Ajinomoto. Okay, um, so it's it's a type it's a, it's a type of salt 
monosodium glutamate so monosodium glutamate and it is being made from a glutamic acid plus a sodium so simple um it's it's pretty much an amino acid so when when you um well if you have read that um msg is not good blah 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 this and that well, msg is just an amino acid so it should be good for your body however having too much of something is always bad okay so that's why people say msg is bad because normally the amount of msg used um in in food preparation is very very high okay other than that you can have nutra sweet okay it, this is um an artificial non calorie um sweetener okay it's basically made up of aspartic acid conjugated with phenylalanine and finally at the um c terminal it's methylated okay so um imagine if you have two amino acids um like this okay one is phenylalanine um aspartic acid i think it's like that if i'm not mistaken um and then um you have so instead of um uh, and H over here you have a metal group okay so this is artificial sweetener I can actually make it in my lab so that's the fun bit um, and also uh, in food industry you can have a, a special taste for example a, a synthetic taste um, other than for example well you, you can sometimes have chewing gum that has a taste of banana flavoring or vanilla and whatnot so other than adding the um <coughs> the original ingredient you can also have something like this where in snow crab you have um addition of glycine alanine arginine glutamic acid and and some other stuff to make the snow crab taste um in food um all right so other than that um in the, dom the domestical animal um industry so amino acid is highly needed in um uh, their food supplements okay so make sure that um they are healthy okay and oh, faster growth cute animals like cats you don't want it you don't want them to grow very fast right so um <clears throat> they, but you want them to be healthy the third industry is pharmaceutical so this is very important especially um nowadays during the covid 19 um um pandemic okay so you can have in supplements for example in um, tube food so if someone was put in comatose you need to feed them right so you feed them by um, adding other than glucose and you also add amino acids um, for some people who are building their muscles so they you might take in you might take in some types of proteins or um, amino acid to build your muscles okay in terms of drugs you you need them for development of some antibiotics so synthesis of of some antibiotics for example uh, gramycidin d okay and also vaccines for example the hpv human papilloma virus vaccine that um, should be able to um, prevent the development of cervical cancer okay it's made from um, synthetic amino acids Right, and the last industry is for cosmetics so you can have a uh, natural moisturizer cleaning agent glutamic acid or glutamine and hair care product for example cysteine okay so you can actually see um, amino acid is very very important um, in our current daily life so if you were to just result from um, extraction from a biological processes you won't have enough for everyone throughout the world okay throughout the globe so you need to find a way to actually synthesize them and uh, fortunate enough there are a few techniques or chemical techniques that you can use to actually synthesize um, amino acids so let's have a look okay um before that so how to produce amino acid chemically so the easiest way is to do a hydrolysis of um, natural protein and then you, you can separate them um, to individual component right so that's that's the easiest way 
chemically. So you can just buy any meat, you put in hydrochloric acid, or you use a different enzyme that digests it, digest um, a protein, then you can get amino acids, okay? However, decades ago, um, chemists discovered other synthetic pathway that are less expensive, okay? It's more complex, but less expensive, and can result in a pure amino acid. So that's, that's the critical um, point of um, the chemistry, producing a pure amino acid, and in large quantity. Okay. In some cases, which I will show later, um, you can ac actually get an unusual or unnatural and enteomerically pure amino acid. Okay. Um, and the most critical for a synthetic asymmetric um, amino acid synthesis is to acquire optically active form. Okay, so the L form. Again, um, last week we've um, touched a little bit on the chirality of an amino acid except for a glycine. Okay, so this chirality normally um, produces, in biology at least, produces the L form of the amino acid, which is an optically um, active form or uh, an enteomerically pure amino acid. So, um, to produce this amino acid in a pure form, you will go through and see that um, it's very, very difficult. If you work through its chemistry to synthesize any molecule that has a chiral center, then you will know that it's very difficult to actually get a, an enteomerically or opti optically active form of the molecule. <coughs> Okay, so as chemists, we do not need to rely 100% on biological system, which is true, okay? And there are currently four widely used synthetic approaches to produce amino acids. So, um, the most critical one is these two, supposedly because it's part of your um, learning outcome for this subject. However, we've also um, included HVZ and reductive ammunition as part of um, the learning process but again um, because we're not gonna have any examination on this so it's kind of like more an introduction about uh, different types of chemistry that you can use to produce amino acid and not so much on um, trying to memorize um, the pathway or, or the reactions and whatnot okay so the first one is um, Hell, Volza, Zelensky, um, or you call it HVZ approach. Um, so you, you actually produce a halogenated alpha carbon um, of a carboxylic acid, and then you react it with ammonia to produce um, an amino acid. Okay, so um, the reaction general scheme is um, presented down here. So where initially you have a carboxylic acid okay in this case um, we are more interested in alpha carboxylic acid okay so um, and the first step is to um, halogenize the alpha carbon so in this case normally what we use is um, bromine and um, triborophosphate okay and then in the presence of water you can get um, a single um, halogenated alpha carbon and then you react it with excess ammonia then um, you will get um, the amine group um, replacing the um, um, halogen okay you recall that the halogen is a very good living group so that's why you can easily get this um, structure of amin amino acid with um, ammonium bromide as the byproduct okay to look at to, to look at the um, reaction mechanism. Um, so the first one is that you need to recall that the alpha proton of a carboxylic acid, a, a carboxyl group, okay? So it doesn't mean that um, as long as we have a, a carboxyl group, you need to remember that the alpha hydrogen is acidic, more so than a beta hydrogen or a gamma hydrogen and whatnot. Okay, so even if you have like um, acetone like this, remember that the alpha hydrogen here 
okay are acidic meaning that you can actually deep um deprotonate the alpha hydrogen to form a sn1 or sn2 or e1 or e2 reactions okay if you don't remember all the terminologies that i'm saying now please um, go back and um, refresh on your first year and second year chemistries okay um so in the presence of a halogen for example bromine a base a uh, phosphorus tribromide or tribro tribrophosphane um, can actually pull or remove the alpha hydrogen and simultaneously be replaced by an amine so um, you should remember that this is actually a substitution reaction and um, based on the conditions that is shown up here you should know that this one is a sn2 reaction okay um nucleophilic substitution um two okay um please remember what's the difference between these and this All right um yep okay so the resulting alpha bromo carboxylic acid can undergo an sn2 reaction to form a racemic this is another terminology um, that you need to remember dnl amino acid in the presence of excess ammonia okay so remember why does this happen okay go back to your sn2 um lecture notes then you should know why does it happen okay if you still can't find your lecture notes or your lecture notes is in the college or whatnot do tell me okay i'll be available um between the the lecture time so five and six five to six pm you can always text me i will definitely reply to you um but otherwise you can shoot me an email or post it on on the spectrum so that everybody else can see your questions or you can even um, you know um post it on whatsapp group so that you can share your knowledge all right Okay, so um, this is another example. So I I'll leave it to you guys um, for you to complete. So this is just a, a trial, a test on um, to see if you have a 3-metal pentanoic acid. If you subject them to um, the two chemical conditions that I've shown earlier, what will you get? Okay, just try your best and, and do this so that you, you will at least learn something. Alright, so the second reaction is um, reductive amination, so also known as reductive alkylation. So it's a one-step catalytic reaction to form an amino acid when an alpha keto acid is treated with ammonia, then hydrogenated in the presence of palladium catalyst. Okay, so basically, um, you have this um alpha keto acid, so that's the acid group. And then alpha because that's carbon alpha. And then keto is because you have a carbonyl group. So it's alpha keto acid. Okay, so first one, the first reaction is to um, react it with excess um, ammonia. So that you can actually convert the um, carboxyl group to... Um, um, so, sorry, imine group in the first place. Okay. So you have an imine group and then um, using palladium catalyst, you can actually convert the imine group to an ammonia. Uh, oh, sorry, to, to an amine, a primary amine um, as shown in the picture. Okay, the um, um, mechanism is um, like this. So initially you have your alpha keto um, acid. Um, remember, because this is an acid, so you always have um hydrogen ion floating around in the system okay so what it does is um because remember in the um uh, carbonyl group we always have uh, a partial charge okay so you have always have a partial positive on the carbon and a partial negative on the um, oxygen and remember that oxygen has a lone pair so it can easily take up um, the proton that is pro floating around in the system so when you have an excess of ammonia so the ammonia can actually attack the um, uh, delta positive 
of the carbon moving pushing the electron towards the oxygen and then the oxygen can actually um, grab a proton to kind of like stabilize it okay so um, as shown in this first picture okay you have your hydrogen attached to your oxygen and then you have your amine um, group now becoming um, uh, an ammonia uh, with a plus charge attached to the alpha carbon okay and then a rearrangement happens whereby um, of course having a positive charge for an ammonia is um, not really favorable so you can so one of the hydrogen moves out producing or reproducing your proton in the system okay and then um, this proton um, can be taken up by your hydroxyl group okay forming um, h2o kind of like h2o system where um, the water molecule again is a good living group okay well under certain condition of course um, in, in this case because you have um, extra lone pair from the ammonia from the from, from the nitrogen you can actually get an imine group with h2o as the living group okay so that's the first um, reaction with excess of ammonia and then you can have a catalytic um, using um, palladium on carbon catalyst you can actually convert this um, well of course with hydrogen you can convert the imine alpha imine group um, into a primary um, amine okay <coughs> right so um, again uh, will you produce a um, an antimerically pure or not that's for you to think about now again another example where you have um, 3 methyl 2 oxo pentanoic acid you have an excess of ammonia you'll get an imine group like this so uh, this yeah. sorry yeah, you am yeah, yeah. Yeah. oh dia pergi KK10 Ah, dia pergi pot potong something. Ha? Huh? Pintu mana buka? Uh, pos pos. Okay, advertisement. Um, I'm actually working at College 7. Alright, so um, if I'm an imine group and in the presence of palladium and carbon and hydrogen, what will you get? So. Huh? Okay, so again, I leave it to you guys to actually complete the um, final structure that you will get um, upon the catalytic um, conversion of an imine um, to primary imine. Alright, so um, the third reaction is Gabriel Malonic Ester approach. So it's a combination reaction of uh, Gabriel synthesis. Um, if you don't know this, you can simply Google to find information. Okay, so it's a Gabriel synthesis of amine um, with Malonic Ester. So there's, there's two um, reactions. So Gabriel synthesis is um, is synthesizing using this okay um melanic ester is that guy over there okay so why gabriel synthesis because the use of phalentimide okay so this one is phalentimide okay and melanic ester again recall the reactivity of an alpha carbon next to a um, a carbonyl so when you have a melanic like this, the uh, pKa of and the alpha carbon is way lower, meaning that it is um, easily removed. So again, once you produce um, a racemic mixture of the amino acid 
from the four reactions um, discussed previously, you can actually react it with um, organic acid and hydride, okay, um, to actually produce an n acetylated um, amino acid. So in this case, you produce n acetylated DNL amino acid. All right. So and then, what you do next is you um, use an enzyme amino acylase where it what it does is it um deacetylate the um acetylated N terminal okay to make it a free um amine group but the most interesting thing is that um this enzyme is very very specific so it's only specific for L amino acid okay so what happened is the D amino acid will still be intact so it will still be acetylated and once you have a um a true different um chemicals like this which has a very very high resolution you can actually separate them fairly easily using a normal silica column or whatever um column uh, whatever um, separation technique that in the industry uses okay so um it produces kind of like a racemic pro amino acid okay and later you subject it to enzymatic reaction to produce uh, that is very selective to the l um, amino acid so you deacetylate that one and finally you'll get a pure l amino acid which you can simply purify okay so this is the um, mechanism on what actually happened if you are interested all right um i think that's that's it and summary of the lecture today is industrial application of amino acid pharmaceuticals food cosmetics animal feed and there's so many other industries um the amino acid can be synthesized via the um helvoza zelinsky reaction reactive amination um and phthalatinidemide melonic ester um or the striker reaction so you have four options um you, you can actually have more than that but these are the four main ones that is being used in the industry um you always produce a racemic mixture okay and you can be separated by what we call as kinetic resolution using the uh, enzyme catalytic reaction that i've shown um, on the previous slide okay and finally it's critical to recall and understand sn2 reaction mechanism but the theory the mechanism and um, how it works under what what conditions okay so go and refresh if you don't remember if you do it's good on you um, and i see you guys next week um, references again if you want to look at um, any of the materials used that's it thank you and please like and subscribe <laughs>